Hello and welcome back. I hope you're all well and not getting too much bogged down by the snow. I know we've had a, quite a bit of snow up in the north and I know it has spread down to the south but I hope you're all well. Uh, I know a few of you may be planning uh, some really good holidays abroad this year, maybe going to France. Uh, we've done France a couple of times and I just wanted to share with you some of our experiences of uh, when we went to France. We've been twice now. The first year that we went to France, uh, again, was the first time we've ever taken the caravan abroad. I have driven out there many a times, but not with a caravan. So the first time we went to France, we went to a site which was northeast of Paris. Um, quite a nice site, uh, quite a big site. I wasn't overly impressed with the pictures, and it, uh, I don't think we, it is a place that we would go to again. It was around about two and a half hours drive from uh, Calais. Um, when we went, down to uh, Dover, we stopped over at Black Horse Farm uh, Caravan and Motorhome Club site, which is just outside of Dover, probably around about 20 minutes away from the port, which was uh, a really handy stopover. So the second time that we went to France, I thought I'd do a little bit more research in terms of where we were going to go to, and the route. first of all, we had to pick the site. And the site that we were going to pick was one that came from a recommendation from a friend at work, and we went to Les Arms, which is in Brittany near Dolbretang. And I'll show you a, uh, I'll show you the site a little bit later on. So we had to look at the routes and options for us. So the first option was to travel uh, from Bolton down to Dover, stay over at Black Horse Farm, and then get the ferry the next day. So this is the route that we were going to take, and it looked like it was going to be around about five and a half to six hours to get down to Dover. And then also we've got the cost of the uh, the site the night before because we want to go down the day before. Once you got over on the ferry, the ferry was round about two hundred and thirty pounds. Uh, we would have to drive from Calais uh, down to the site, which would take round about five and a half to six hours to get there. Now I do enjoy driving, um, but if I can decrease the amount of driving that we were going to do on, on the other side, on France, then I would do. We've also got to take into consideration, I looked at the tolls and there was around about £50 in tolls each way. So with this I looked at another route that we could possibly take. So for this one I looked at Poole to Cherbourg. This is the route down to Poole for us and that was slightly less of a time traveling it took us around about five and a half hours when you get to the pool harbor you can park up within the lanes of the waiting area it costs five pounds to park overnight there are toilets and showers there and in the morning there is a cafe where you can go and get something to eat we arrived there around six o'clock in the evening and put the legs down had a bit of a relax and then went to bed and then about six o'clock in the morning they start uh, moving for the ferry which left I think about eight o'clock in the morning. So the ferry from Poole to Cherbourg is roughly four and a half hours and it was a cost of £380. Obviously this is the route that we took and from uh, Cherbourg to the site as you can see here the actual travel time was roughly two and a half hours. Now looking at the costings of it, it was actually cheaper to go Poole, Cherbourg than Dover to Calais and there was less driving time in France. So that suited me fine. Uh, so that's the route that we went. There are other routes that you can take. You can go from uh, Portsmouth down to St Milo, which is again an overnight ferry. But then you've got to think about more costs incurred in terms of uh, you've got to get cabins and you know it's going to cost you more for food. But that, that was an ideal ferry for us. It got us in a decent time and we had a bit of travelling time on the end to get to the site. In my wisdom, I did lots of research and I looked at both routes. Obviously, we picked the uh, Pool to Cherbourg route and I decided to get a tag for the toll roads, uh, an Imovis tag, uh, which would hopefully make it a lot easier when we're going through the tolls. Now, I didn't do my research very well because after checking the route again, after I got the tag, put the tag in the car, I realised that there are no toll rolls in Brittany. Um, so anyway, we, we've got the tag there. It can be useful for another trip, which we're hopefully going to go next year to France. So there are many different options if you're travelling to France. 
you do need to do your research. We booked our ferries through the Caravan and Motorhome Club. We actually booked the sites direct. It was uh, a lot easier um, to, to book them direct and they were a little bit cheaper than actually booking with the club. And you didn't pay for the this site that I'm going to show you, Les Homes. You paid a little bit of a deposit and then you didn't pay anything until you got there. So basically when you arrived, you checked in and you paid. Um, so yeah, it was an easy route. Um, there was It was quite hilly, so we used quite a bit of fuel. It cost us about 30 quid in fuel to get from Cherbourg to the site. But there's lots of things within that region. So lots of different ferries to look at. We went with Brittany ferries, lots of different routes. So yeah, do have a look around. Don't just think Dover to Calais. It might not be cheaper. Try try. To so this is the site that we stayed at. It's Les Orms Domain, which is near Dolbertang. It's a very big site. There are lots and lots of things to do on there. The only, uh, I'd say, negative point about it is that there is lots of children hanging around the arcade at night, which can be slightly intimidating, possibly for younger children. But other than that, it was absolutely fantastic. And it is one that we're going to go to again. So let's have a look at the accommodation. Uh, there are lots of different types of accommodation there. There's a hotel, uh, nature lodges, mobile homes, apartment studios. You've also got some tree houses, which were absolutely fantastic. Raft houses, which uh, are on the lake near the front of the resort. Um, there are some camping huts and camping pitches, obviously. Sweet homes and the uh, baubles. I don't like to stay in a bauble, might be quite cold. So let's have a look at the uh, camping pitches, which we're more concerned about. There are quite a lot of camping uh, pitches here. Can't remember how many, but it will tell you on the site. Uh, and there are various locations and various types of pitches. The pitch that we went for was a Castle Premium pitch, 16 amp electricity and 150 square metres, which was absolutely massive. Uh, 16 amp electricity, as I said, it had a fridge, water and drainage, so it was a fully serviced pitch. Garden furniture, a barbecue, and it had free Wi-Fi on the pitch, which was absolutely brilliant. Uh, the tariffs for this year, I think last, well, a couple of years when we went, it was, I think it was about £750 for 14 nights. So, uh, and the pitches that we stayed on, the Castle Premiums, are the ones in the centre there. And I think there's probably about 10 pitches, so you're quite uh, away from everybody else, and it was quite quiet at night. The toilet box was quite close to it as well. Looking at the bars and restaurants, there's quite a lot of bars and restaurants on here. There was a pizza place, uh, the clubhouse, uh, there was a restaurant where you uh, needed to book. I would advise in peak areas or peak times to, to actually book seats rather than just turning up. But you could turn up at the, the takeout section. The services that were there, there was a souvenir shop, Wi-Fi in the bar area. Uh, there was a mini supermarket, which was quite reasonably priced. Bike rental, you can get taxis. Uh, there was a laundrette, baby changing areas and cash points. So there's quite a lot there. And a chapel if you need to go and have a pray. Quite a few swimming pools on here. Um, some outdoor and some indoor. You can actually use the swimming pools at the hotel and uh, at the lodges. So there's various ones that you can use. For this year, what they're doing for the summer, they've put in a dome over the main pool area, which will keep it all nice and warm, no matter what the weather is. So that looks quite a good, interesting project they've got going on. Entertainment at night was mostly outdoors near the pool area and near the bar. Uh, quite a lot of kids entertainment. There's also a free uh, club for children which they can go to during the day. So lots of little bits and bobs going on for them. They had some fireworks displays as well which was quite good. If you're into your golf this is a place for you. It's got an 18 hole golf course there which is an absolutely fantastic looking course. Uh, I've not played for a long time but if you do want to take your golf clubs I would strongly advise it to there because it looks absolutely fantastic. There's quite a lot to do in the area. Um, you can see there there's lots of different attractions uh, that you can go to. We did go to Mont Saint-Michel, -Saint which was really nice. Uh, we didn't go to St. Milo. Um, we were going to go to Dinan, but didn't go. Um, but there are, I'd say, quite a lot of things nearby. Uh, in terms of the beach, it's probably about 20 minutes, 25 minutes drive to the beach, which is not too bad. So I hope that's give you a little bit of insight into uh, travelling over into France about different routes that you can take uh, and different options that you've got. Uh, I'm currently researching sites for next year, 
but um, I think we may go back to Les Arms. I, I'm not too sure. We maybe want to go a little bit further south, but we're trying to work out the costings and what's the best way to do it. There are lots of uh, sites on the Caravan and Motorhome Club that you can look at. Um, what I tend to do is go onto the Caravan and Motorhome Club, find the site, and then go direct to the site and get some more information. So, there's yeah, there's lots of research to do. As I say, we don't know what's going to happen in this year in terms of Brexit, but I don't think that we won't stop going to France. So thanks for watching, and I will see you again very soon. Bye-bye.